more surveys or something. 
which is basically what we need. Uh, my name is Jordan Steele. I'm the archivist at the Biddle Law Library at Penn Law School. And I'm here today with my colleague, Al Dong, who's not present at the moment, who is the government documents librarian and part of the library's reference staff. Al and I have two reasons for talking to you today about the Bill Law Library's experience administering the social computing survey. First, we ostensibly wanted to detail for you our reasons for undertaking the survey, which we have administered on an annual basis to 1L students since 2006 and 2L and 3L students since 2008. <coughs> I'm also going to discuss our process for administering the survey, and I will comment on some general observations and conclusions that we've drawn from the data collected over four years. But because we found this survey so successful within our own organization, we're curious to analyze the extent to which our results compare in other law library contexts. In particular, there's something unique about our own student body that explains their relationship with these technologies? Or can we see a general pattern among law students? The best way to attempt to answer this question naturally is to expand the survey to other law libraries. And so we're here with a pitch. After you've heard about our experience administering the social computing survey, we'd like to invite you to bring the survey to your own institution. Our goal is to aggregate data about the social computing behaviors of law school students so that we might present the results at next year's annual meeting of the Association of American Law Libraries, which is taking place in Philadelphia in the summer of 2011. If our session were approved, we would want to invite representatives from other law libraries to participate with us in a panel discussion. <coughs> As I said, on a related note, my colleague Al Dong has distributed a copy of the survey for you while I'm presenting. Looks like he was able to make a few more copies. That's great. Thanks, Al. Following my presentation, I'll give you the opportunity to ask questions about the survey and provide suggestions on how the survey might be improved. Can everyone hear me in the back? One caveat before I begin our story, the survey is largely the outcome of two individuals who can't be with you here today. My supervisor, Ed Greenlee, who is the Associate Director for Public Services at the Biddle Law Library, and Mike Barton, a reference librarian at Drexel University Law Library. Due to personal reasons, Ed and Mike were unable to attend the conference, and so they have asked Al and me to present this information on their behalf. Mike has the excuse to end all excuses. As a member of the Coast Guard Reserve, he's down in the Gulf of Mexico right now helping to clean up the oil spills wrecking that area of the country. Yay. So I will try to answer any questions the best I can, but if I'm unable to, I have two suggestions. Please do contact Ed and Mike. I'm going to provide their contact information at the end. But more importantly, blame British Petroleum. <laughs> In 2006, the Biddle Law Library had noticed the growth and use of new hardware, software, and websites, and we wanted to find out the extent to which our own student body was using these <coughs> next generation tools, as well as those technologies which already maintained a presence both in the physical space of the library and our services to students. Anecdotally, we were witnessing an increasing number of students using things like smartphones and visiting blogs, wikis, social networking sites like Facebook, commonly referred to as Web 2.0 technologies or social computing technologies. Concurrently, the library staff itself was beginning to familiarize itself with these tools. And we were exploring ways to support students' legal research activities through them. However, before we began implementing anything, we wanted to see if we could gather some empirical data about our student body's relationship with these social technologies. What they used, how they used them, and if they could envision using them for legal research. The librarians believed that the results from the entire sample would benefit the library by providing data regarding the services, databases, web resources, and tools incoming students actually use thereby permitting the library to design and implement information services with these preferences in mind. 
So we created a survey in the summer of 2006 and administered it that fall. We found the survey to be so successful, we continued it each year, tweaking the questions to keep up with trends in technology. To test our hypothesis, the librarians designed a survey utilizing an electronic <laughs> survey creator supported by the law school's IT department. The survey consisted of 30 easily answerable questions, which were subdivided into roughly five major categories. General information usage, hardware, our website, databases, and some general demographic information. 20 of the questions were required for the survey to be regarded as complete. 10 of the questions were optional and typically elicited follow-up or clarifying information to several of the required questions. Generally speaking, the questions we asked in the survey were as follows. What online tools do you use? We provided example, example answers like blogs and Facebook, but also Google and our own online public access catalog, which illustrates that we were just as interested in surveying old ways of finding information as new ways. What electronic equipment do you use? With this question, we wanted to find out how much students use the desktop computers in the library's computer lab, and also use laptops and smartphones. After asking about general use of emerging technologies like blogs, wikis, Facebooks, etc., we asked students if they used any of these for legal research, and relatedly, if they didn't, if they wanted the opportunity to do so. In 2006, we began administering the survey to our first year students during our legal research sessions. Each incoming class at Penn Law School is about 275 students. All 1Ls are required to take a series of legal research classes taught by the librarians at the Biddle Law Library. In these sessions, we introduce the students to the main databases they will be using during their tenure at law school. Westlaw, LexisNexis, and the like, and we also teach the strategies for performing research in the law. Because these classes are required, anything we implement has a high possibility of 100% participation. So in order to gain a prominent set of survey respondents the, at the beginning of these legal research classes, we asked the students to complete the survey. They weren't forced to complete it, although if they elected not to, they just sat there while everyone else filled it out. <laughs> The survey was designed to take about five minutes. Because we had a captive audience, on average, we received a response rate of about 60%. In 2008, we decided to expand the survey to two L's and three L's. However, because we didn't have a captive audience like the one L's, receiving a representative res sample of responses presented a bit of a challenge. In the end, we decided to send out a mass email to all two L's and three L's inviting them to take the survey. In return for their participation, they would be entered into a drawing to win a free iPod. On average, about a third of 2Ls and 3Ls responded to the survey in 2008 and 2009, about half the response rate of the 1Ls. This makes sense, however, given there wasn't the soft requirement of taking the survey like we enjoyed with the 1Ls. We felt that the response rate was large enough that the librarians could begin to draw some general conclusions about the way our student body interacts with social technologies. Based on four years of conducting this survey, we've been able to notice some trends and draw some conclusions about our students' technology use. Now, since I wasn't involved, intimately involved with implementing the survey or analyzing the results over the past few years, I won't provide many hard numbers, but I can describe for you some of our findings, which might give you an idea of the sort of information you might gather from your own student body should you choose to participate in our proposed interinstitutional survey. When asked about general information usage, the vast majority of first-year students responded that they read some form of newspapers, magazines, or journals online, typically one to four publications per week. Some of the more commonly mentioned online publications among all the groups surveyed included, the, uh, included uh, the websites The New York Times, The Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, The Economist, things like that. Slightly more than half of our first-year students read blogs online. 
Again, they read them about one to four of them weekly. <laughs> Some of the more commonly mentioned blogs perused by students included Above the Law and Real Clear Politics. About 12% of first year students responded that they use RSS feeds or other information aggregators, a clear minority. The most popular web tools utilized included Facebook, YouTube, instant messaging, and wikis. Does anyone else need a copy of the survey? Got one more. We also asked students how they perform research in an effort to determine how technology, both old and new, support this process. So when assigned a research task or question, the most popular persons and resources consulted by first year students included Peers, Google, and Westlaw. All of those came in at around 80%. Lexis and Wikipedia were in the 60% point range. Professors at around 40, and reference librarians bringing up the rear at 26%. <laughs> Students also appeared to be aware that it was necessary to check the credibility of information obtained from the internet. When asked how they determined whether web-based information was credible, Typical responses from the student, students included, quote, I check for sources and citations, or, quote, I check the publisher and credentials of the author. Also, quote, I look for the number of times uh, the, the uh, item is referenced by other respectable authors or journals. Unfortunately, a number of student responses indicated that they do not regularly verify the credibility of information. These types of responses included, I assumed it was all credible, and <laughs> adjectivals like blind intuition and blind luck and things like that. They actually said that. About 35% of first year students listen to podcasts. Most of these podcast listeners do so infrequently, however, turning into a podcast, turning in tuning into a podcast either monthly or less than monthly. As I mentioned before, we also wanted to learn about the ways in which our students use hardware <coughs> technology. A majority of the first year students use desktop computers in the Biddle Law Library. When asked how often they use them, the majority of desktop users replied weekly. All of the survey respondents own laptop computers, which makes sense because only one is a requirement of the law school. <laughs> Additionally, an overwhelming majority, 90%, also own an iPod or an MP3 player, or other MP3 player, I suppose. Given the high ownership rates of laptops and MP3 players, we noticed that smartphone ownership has increased which, with each year of the survey. Interestingly, when these owners were asked if they would like to use smartphones or PDAs to conduct legal research, the majority of respondents actually answered no. Hmm. When asked about our website, the large majority of first year students rarely, if ever, visit the Biddle Law Library's website. However, when asked about the layout and navigability of the website to the extent that they are familiar with it, the majority of students were predisposed to view the site either neutrally or favorably. When further asked if there were any particular links or databases they'd like to see on the home page, several students, again, admitted that they didn't visit it often enough and therefore could not comment, while one su student suggested offering a link to, quote, congressional history. <laughs> <laughs> these, are, these are one else. <laughs> Consistent, consistent with the lack of library web page usage and visits, a small minority of first-year students actually utilize databases on the Van Biddle and Van Pelt Library websites. Despite this low reported usage, when we extended the survey to 2Ls and 3Ls, a majority of students also re reported accessing online databases from home <coughs> or elsewhere off campus. Of those who actually utilize available online resources, some of the more commonly used databases included Lexis, Westlaw, EBSCO, and JSTOR. For the most part, the survey results confirmed expectations and were largely consistent with prior observations made by the librarians. Differences between men and women first-year students with regards to their technological research technological and research preferences and aptitudes were for the most part negligible. 
with some nominal disparities for blog and podcast usage, smartphone ownership, library website participation, and off-campus database access. There were, however, several interesting findings from the survey. First, the overwhelming uses of usage of Facebook and YouTube by first-year students surprised some of us on staff and strongly suggested that the library should develop its presence on these sites and explore ways to reach out to these students utilizing these web tools. Our Facebook page debuted uh, about two years ago. Second, only a slight majority of the students currently read blogs. The library, which develops and maintains a blog partially for the benefit of the students, had assumed the percentage would be significantly higher. Third, few students actually listen to podcasts, and those that do listen infrequently, suggesting little current reward for the library developing podcasts for students. Finally, the percentage of students who do not use the library's webpage and were generally unfamiliar with resources available to them through the webpage was a bit higher than unexpected. Potential biases within the data appear to be twofold. First, because students were strongly encouraged, although not required, to complete the survey prior to beginning a legal research class or workshop, students may have felt pressured by the librarians or peers to complete the survey against their wishes, thereby injecting response bias. <laughs> Indeed, some examples of response bias within the data included snarky comments to open-ended questions, snarky and entertaining. <laughs> as well as one student who, had, who identified him or herself as 65 years old, although no, there's no 65-year-old student in the first year class. <laughs> Second, it is possible that students may have inadvertently selected a category on the electronic survey that may not have accurately reflected the answer when we were designing the survey. For example, selecting neutral rather than somewhat agreed in response to how they navigate the library website and if they can find materials to their satisfaction. Despite these potential biases, however, the robust, the robust sample size in proportion to the entire population of first-year students should help us to mitigate the effects on the data. The library has been able to act on our results in three key ways. First, the survey data generally helped explain our students' relationship with social technologies, which helped us to devise strategies to support this usage. The Facebook, uh, the Facebook page is a, is a prime example of that. The most prominent example of, of this, like I said, was the debut of our Facebook page. We also included questions regarding student preference for instruction. Based on those results, we began teaching our legal research classes to 1Ls in smaller group sessions than we'd done previously. On a related note, when pitching these new ideas to administration, we had the numbers to justify the new ideas. We weren't bound by mere conjecture and anecdotes. And finally, the students' responses helped us look at ourselves and to what extent we were keeping pace with the students' exploration <coughs> of these new technologies. As information professionals, we pride ourselves on being, on being at the vanguard of innovation and technology. The survey results helped us confirm successes, as well as point to areas for us to improve our so-called technological literacy to help better serve our patron base. As I mentioned at the outset of this talk, part of our reason for discussing our survey with you today is to solicit your participation in our expansion of it. Our hope is that partnering with other law libraries, we can begin to draw conclusions about students' social computing behaviors on a cultural level. Our first step was to distribute the survey, as we did prior to the presentation, <coughs> to give you the opportunity today and in the future to provide suggestions for how you think we might improve the questions in order to gather the best possible information about our students' technology behaviors. But the real success of this survey lies in our efforts to bolster the number of institutions interested in participating in it. So with that, I want to conclude my remarks, and at this point, I'm happy to answer questions about the survey to the extent that I can answer them, and hear feedback on the survey's choice of questions, which you have before you. Also, if you would like to participate in our expansion of the survey, or would like to learn more about our goals, Al is on hand. Al, can you raise your hand? Al, you probably know him now. Al is on hand to take down your contact information. Ed or Mike, 
<coughs> whose email addresses I have displayed here will be in contact soon. Thank you for atten your attention, and with that, I would like to open the floor for questions or comments, and you in the back are the first. How about uh, you guys? You said you gave the survey first to 1Ls. When in the semester did you give them the survey? It was the fall. It was the fall, and I'm trying to remember what I think it was possibly in the middle of the fall. The question was, is when did we administer the survey to the students? And Alice said, Alice said that basically it was at the beginning of the, uh, of the school year, which was around the fall. That's when we have our legal research sessions, right? It was, but I think we actually gave it pretty much the middle of the fall semester. Okay. All right. The middle of the fall semester. Yes? Um, with the Facebook page, after you all created the Facebook page, how many fans or likes or whatever terminology is I don't of your students? Yeah. I don't have the exact numbers, but I do know the person who was in charge of creating the Facebook page, Merle Slyhoff, who works with us, yes. um, she is pleased with the number of people who become fans. I believe it's over 100. Okay, 235. Thank you. Oh, it's got people on the Yeah. Al, would you care to elaborate on that? If I'm not mistaken, don't quote me this, but I think we have some like 351. I last spoke with her. Oh, did we, but we had a number confirmation. What was it, 235? University of Pennsylvania, you did a law library fake fan page. Yeah. It currently has 235 people like okay. this. Yeah. Is there any way to determine how many of those are students, though? No. I mean, uh, I know it's hard to know, but. Um, does anyone, so the question was, is other than going through each and every person, does anyone know if there's a way to filter the results to see how many are students? Anyone else? I think that's the only way you can is to go through. Yeah. Through, through. yeah I think so too. Yeah. 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 Uh, yes. Um, so I'm interested in my idea of doing this interinstitutionally. Since you all started this originally as just your own information, have you gone through your university's research committee for approval? Yeah, so that's actually, Mike is actually, <coughs> Mike Barton, who is the uh, a reference librarian at, at Drexel's law school. Um, he is actually working with Drexel to grease the wheels on that kind of thing, going through IRB approval and things like that. So he's the point person on that, and basically, yeah, I mean, they we're working on it, and we're confident that we'll be able to resolve those sort of issues if we decided to expand the survey. The question was about IRB approval if you wanted to expand the survey. Yes? Uh, just a comment on that, a couple of questions, and then a comment on the survey. Sure. Uh, a survey like this should pretty easily qualify for expedited review, expedited IRB review, because you're not, you're not taking any um, particularly sensitive information, as far as I see. And so most, uh, at least it's often the case, at least I found that it was the case with us, that our uh, IRB office was actually really eager to work with us and really helpful because it's an easy disposition <coughs> them, right it's something they can turn around quickly um, on to the, the the survey uh, do you have a total number of participants do you know what your n is not offhand not offhand uh, you mentioned that many of the students didn't use the website you said more than you expected do you have a, a percentage I don't that I'm not sorry. Right all right strike two um, <laughs> they, they, yeah. uh, I'm sorry Al would you like I'm to have said you said that the, our participation was about 60 yeah, 60%, 60% but I was, I was wondering what the total, what the raw number was. Uh, so I'm looking at the raw number. It's uh, 187 last year. 187 last year. 187 last Steven year. So it's in our IT department. So thanks. That's for the one ounce. That's for the one. Oh, that's just the one ounce? Right. So over all four years, maybe like uh, 800, I guess, maybe if you've got sure. 200 yeah. a year. Okay. Um. Have you, you know, here's the question that's going to, if you're going to look at this, is going to give you more trouble with the IRB uh, 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 review because there's clearly a correlation between income and uh, smartphone activity, right. right? Have you considered trying to measure respondents' income or, you know, something like that? And if so, how might you do that without running afoul of... Well. That, that presumes that I know what would run a foul of IRB. But uh, I, would say, I, I, would say, I would say, however, 
that uh, I agree with you. One of, the, one of the reasons why we're interested in expanding the survey is, like I said, to introduce the survey into a lot of different contexts where we may be able to survey people who come from a wide right. array of socioeconomic backgrounds. I mean, the thing about Penn is that it perhaps Penn Law School, by being a private law school, uh, may attract certain types of people, and that might affect the way that they responded. So absolutely, we're interested in expanding the survey to you know, public law schools and all kinds of other, other environments. Just one follow-up with that. Sure. Uh, in terms of participating in the inter-institutional survey, would uh, participant institutions have full access to all of the data, or would they just have access to data coming out of their schools? Um, or are you guys kind of not really yeah, I don't talk about that too yeah, much? Yeah, I think that basically what we want to do is we want to be as accommodating as possible to the participants right. uh, in the survey. We want to make it as um, enticing and as, and, and as easy on you all as possible. So basically, I think that Ed and Mike are willing to work with people if that means they're interested in participating in the survey. We're not going to put the kibosh on anything, particularly at this early stage of the game. Yeah. Did you have a follow-up question about, I saw you raise your hand about the... Well, I agree that this is going to be easy to get through IRB. My question was more because you're going to have to get retroactive approval because you're not really supposed to be publishing or talking about listens that you get. And my, to be very blunt about it, I wanted to see whether you guys had thought about that yet so that I knew whether I wanted to participate. Right, right, so, yeah. Well, if um, you give us your contact information yeah. at the end, uh, I can actually have Ed will be able to contact you within the next couple of days to answer any of those questions. That's and right. Al's actually recording everyone's questions and he'll be able to send out a brief. Yeah, we have a reporter and Al's taking notes. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to just basically provide a brief of the comments during the presentation. We're going to forward them to Ed and, and Mike and they should be able to get back to you as quickly as possible. Yes, sir. You talked about at middle law. Well, our laptops are required. Have you developed any questions? Because for a lot of law schools, they're not going to be required. And that would seem to me to be a front end question that you would need higher up because there's a presumption in your school we don't have to think about that. Right. Yeah. I believe the, uh, the question said, do you own a laptop? Um, so an answer to that could be no. Um, so that would factor in whether or not a laptop is required. I guess we could do a follow-up question to ask, are laptops required at your school? Is that something we're thinking about? Well, yeah, because I've done this kind of survey in the past, and the question was sort of an open-ended, do you own a laptop? Do you own a desktop? Do you own both? Okay. And letting <clears throat> the students pre-select because what they're using may determine what their other answers are following after that. Right, right. That's a good suggestion. Thanks. Uh, yes, sir. Um, if you can please, please uh, repeat briefly the results for the question about where the students go for research assignments, where sure, reference yeah. memorandum came up last, and uh, if the law school has taken any act or the library has taken any action on that, on that specifically. All right. Let's see here. The question was, where do students go for research? Here we go. All right, the most popular response was around 80%. That was Peers, Google, and Westlaw. All of those were around the 80% range. Peers, Google, and Westlaw. In the 60% range were Lexis and Wikipedia. Professors were 40%. And reference librarians we're at 26 percent. Um, as to your question, if the library, if the librarians have, have actually tried to respond to that to kind of increase the, stu the students' use of us, basically, um, do you have any idea, Al, of how, just in general, how we try to encourage you know the students to interact with us if they have particular questions over the course of their tenure in the law school? What we do is in. Our first year of teaching, we do hand out our business cards. Um, we try to be as welcoming as possible in terms of the library assignments, um, seminar papers, summer internships, clinics. Uh, we tell them students that students can make appointments with us. We emphasize that in terms of uh, 
library tutorials, and uh, any other opportunities we have. Uh, that is in general what we do. Uh, this gentleman back here had a question. Yes, sir. Um, the, the total sample size is uh, only 238 out of uh, 800 students. Is that right? Good. How many is the total students? How many total students do we have at the law school, do you think? Roughly there's about 850 to 880 from JD to LOM to SJD. So don't you think that the sample size is too small to predict the student's information seeking behavior? The, com the comment was whether the uh, sample size, 238, was too small given the, uh, or the sample response this number of respondents, 238, is too small um, given the overall size of the students at the law school. That's a very good comment, which I can't comment on, but we're definitely passing it along. And for what specific reason you use the quantitative approach instead of a qualitative approach? Um, I, think, I think, if I can conjecture, I think the reason is because we wanted the students to be able to answer the survey as brief as quickly as possible. We want basically what we were doing was building the survey into the beginning of the legal research sessions. So we didn't want the students to take a lot of time because we had other things, more pressing issues that we wanted to get to, to get to. And so we wanted the the survey basically to be responded in about five minutes. Um, and we did have opportunities in the survey for them to respond qualitatively. And like I said, I mean, a lot of the responses weren't that substantive, and some of them were kind of frankly smart. <laughs> um, yes, sir, and then I'll get you. Yes, sir. Uh, I believe the, the numbers you were giving us were just for the first year respondents? Uh, no, I basically, the, my, my, my general remarks about the usage were actually a mixture of, res of responses for first year students and the two L's and the three L's. Did you see any changes in the approaches between first years versus upper years, especially in terms of what we were just talking about, which is where they go for their right. research? Al, do you have any comment about that? If generally, do the two L's and three L's tend to visit us more than the one L's? <coughs> I would say it's predominantly the one L's because of the research. Uh, the, it, it, it's really hard to quantify that. Yeah. The two and three L's do come because we do report with them during the first year. But you don't have the, in terms of the data. Yes, the, answer, data, the, the, answer, data. the short answer to your question is we do have that data. Yeah. I just don't have that data. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. We did record that data, and I can't comment on whether it, it went up or not. Because you had, you know, middle of fall semester, they don't know how to do research. <laughs> right. And your numbers bear that right. out. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. A follow up to a couple of questions back on the number of res or where they go to for help. I'm going to presume, since 80% of them go to their peers, that you have a collaborative policy in your research assignments. <laughs> Are they actually answering honestly and saying, yes, I'm willing to violate the honor code? I would say the pedagogical method at the law school is fairly collaborative. Would you agree? <coughs> yes. yes. Do you know anything about the kinds of things the students say or do or ask when they go on Facebook? That I really didn't comment on. Uh, and we weigh in and go slide all the time. I may be able to tell you a little bit about what we use the Facebook page for. So basically what Merle uses is Merle is basically the administrator of our Facebook page. And what she uses it for is to post it. So we have a library blog. And normally the blog is not used to post uh, late-breaking announcements. Um, we usually use our blog posts to craft more substantive, thoughtful, expository pieces. And so our blog is used for more long-term, uh, our sort of long-form uh, exposition. The Facebook page is actually used for things more like, you know, um, the library is closing next week at 5 p.m., those sorts of things, announcements and so forth. Um, but we also have, I believe we also have an RSS feed of our blog that is embedded in the in the Facebook page, so that any time a blog post is created, that gives the students another access point to find out about a new blog post. Um, yes. Do you have a Twitter account? And are you asking about that online? We are asking about it. We do not have a Twitter account. So my uh, no, I'm going to get well. So you, I'll get you and then you. I look at the abstract and 
we're going to use this uh, survey results to collection, development, and management, and methods of the legal research instruction. Uh, how are you going to use research most specifically to those aspects? Well, um, I would say that just in general, we are interested in GAT. At this stage, I believe um, the, uh, the data that we've collected over the past few years, we've primarily used for our public services department and trying to work specifically with students in doing legal research. But that doesn't mean that some of the data that we collect when we have the time to sort of reflect upon it over the trends in the last few years, we're able to build into other services within the library. I don't know if we have, if we have actually implement, if we've actually taken the data and implemented it into those services at that point, but the idea is that we may possibly use it for that in the future. Yes, ma'am. Did you break up the results by the years, by first year, second, and third year? And if so, was there a big difference between the first year results and the second and third year results? Um, we did break it up according to year. Um, I can't comment the extent to which the, there was a gap, but there definitely were upticks in 2Ls and 3Ls in terms of things like website usage, database usage, those kinds of things. Generally speaking, and maybe Al can comment on this just by, by virtue of his interaction with the students, generally speaking, as the, as the students become more familiar with the, tool, with the, with the, with the available ref, research tools, they tend to use them more as they progress mm -hmm. in their tenure at law school. Would you agree? That's, that's more than fair enough. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> yes, sir. Um, as a family member, uh, over the last two years, my experience with Facebook has taken an interesting turn. When I'm friended by students, I politely decline because I don't think it's an appropriate venue for a, student, a formal student-faculty relationship. But what is astonishing I won't, so I won't get into how I got on the Facebook the students that made me do it, but that's another story. And I'd say two-thirds of the people who have friended me are former students. So that I have this kind of astonishing, I guess, happy birthday from somebody who graduated 10 years ago. And I would think that your alumni offices and your fundraising people should know that this is a possible way. Uh, anyway, you see where it goes. Yes, it's a very good comment. What he was saying is that um, he keeps in touch with students who have graduated uh, through Facebook, and he was saying that it might be a good way for the alumni, uh, alumni relations and development office to use Facebook in order to keep in touch with alumni after they've graduated and moved on. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that um, I think that the trend is. You know, particularly in light of some of the uh, this uh, privacy controversy that's going on with Facebook. Generally speaking, students uh, just I would say inf you know information seekers in general, and particularly students, are becoming more savvy about the way that they present themselves online. And so it will be interesting to see. It would be interesting to take a look at say how students used Facebook in say 2006 and how they're using it in 2010, how they're going to be using it in 2015 if Facebook's still around, so forth and so on. Yes? I noticed even that trend with um, students from their undergraduate days to their graduate student days and pictures that they may have posted, you know, when they're 19 or 20 are gone, you know, when they're 24, 25, which is all really good stuff. I mean, one of the things I try to preach is, you know, do not put anything on the internet that you would want published in the New York Times. I mean, that's just, I remember years ago I had a boss who told me that about email, and that has just so stuck with me for you know, 15 yes. years or whatever. But um, I think they have gotten more savvy. It is interesting with students who want to friend you. Um, and, you know, some of our faculty, in fact, I think all the faculty that I know of that have Facebook accounts, their policy is not to friend current students, you know, as alumni mm -hmm. that they do. Right. And um, we did a similar survey last year, and I even asked about Twitter usage and things and said, you know, if, if we had a Twitter account, would you follow the law library on Twitter? And not very many people had them, even less would follow us. Less would, 
You know, when I asked about Facebook, and would you be willing to friend or like or whatever the terminology was last year, you know, our page, or would you use it? And they said no. But you know what's interesting about surveys <coughs> is people will say stuff, and then they turn around and their habits become very different. So <coughs> I kind of looked at the results, especially with the Twitter stuff, um, as an opportunity, even though the percentage was low, like 30-something percent, but to me that looked like an opportunity to kind of get on that bandwagon and figure out a, a good way in which to use that technology. Right. Um, other people looked at it like if only 30% of people are using it, then why are we bothering to do it? Right. You know, so yeah. surveys are interesting. Yeah, yeah, and I think you know, one of the, unrelated to the interinstitutional inter survey that we're going to do, one of the things we've been talking about for a few years now and hopefully we'll implement one of these days is to have actually have follow-up um, focus groups with some of the students. One of the nice things is over the summer in, uh, at the law school, we have uh, summer uh, research assistants who uh, we have a liaison, uh, at, the, at the law library we have a liaison program with, with our faculty where faculty working on a particular project, they send projects to us, we perform, we perform research for them and send them back you know, reports and memos and briefs, things like that. Well over the summer we actually have law school students who, you know, want to try something different or can't get one of the traditional sort of summer internships uh, do the summer art that we have a summer RA program. And what we talked about before is that's a real captive audience because you're dealing with those five or six people every single day, you know them well, maybe over lunch just buy a couple pizzas and have them sit in and talk about their general information and seeking behaviors, you know, might be able to sort of, um, you know, kind of supplement this, the information we got from the survey with some more qualitative responses. Yes, sir. Uh, does Penn's course evaluation survey for faculty ask any questions about similar technological issues or, or social technology usage? And, and if so, is there any effort to dovetail what you're learning early on for one else, for example, and what they might be encountering in individual classes? Yeah. The question slash very good suggestion, which I can't answer your question, but the, good, the suggestion is that perhaps might there be a way to uh, to dovetail uh, the responses received in course evaluations with our own social computing survey? Um, I actually don't know the answer to that. I'm sorry. Does anyone who's here from our IT department, Christine? Yeah. So uh, the course evaluations don't ask that type of question. Although the class we have the ability to ask custom questions on. The, the, the faculty have the ability to add custom questions. Are there any other questions or comments? All right, well, um, so that concludes the presentation. Um, like I said, we're really interested in expanding the survey. If you're interested in participating in it or want to find out more, Al is on hand to collect your business card or contact information. If you can't get to Al because there's a line, feel free to come up to me and get the business cards. Yeah, Ed and Mike will be back in touch with you in the near future to be able to answer any questions or you can progress and help you. Thanks for coming.
was supposed to be doing what Al was doing. And then basically they just kind of rolled out the wayside. <laughs> and Ed was out there for, for a reason, and then Mike got in touch with me, and all of a sudden I'm giving a presentation on something. I actually was involved in developing the first in 2006. I was actually on the committee that wrote the first survey. For the last four years, I've been deep by out of reference in my head, and I haven't really been involved. So it's a bit of a crash course for me to kind of remember this kind of stuff. Yeah. You know what I didn't realize is, was it administered experience in that class? Yes, yeah, so they all made their laptops there. So they logged in to the yes. survey. So what happened is we said, welcome to legal. Well, this was your Oh, that's right. You guys had your yes. okay. We were like, well, welcome to the legal research class before we begin. Please fill out the survey. We didn't want to do it at the end of class because students were going to be leaving and that kind of thing. So, something that Ed, I guess, was like, I like, with the name, I so, I mean, it was all going to be online. Well, I think, we've, I think they've looked at the things like, you know, like a media account for serving the reader or something like that. I mean, you know, the cost for like a the survey creator is, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's justifiable with their budget expenses. So, if we were interested in really getting some data, we might be able to use Yes. Right. But the problem might be with higher you know thing if you store data about your students on some of the other schools. Survey or some on server or on some. Yeah, Mike is Mike is really working on you know, when he's not cleaning up oil spills. Mike is actually working on all these details. And the idea is that he's gonna suss it all out of the reason. Drexel has a lot of people that are gonna fire. I think they have a very rigorous interview approval process because they're like part of more like science and research university. So the idea is Mike is gonna work on all things with Drexel and then he'll know like, what to anticipate and then he'll increase the wheel. I think I, I'm not I, I actually I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. I think it's also so the point is he'll contact us. Yeah. 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 All right, thank you. See you later. Can you sort it?
just, you know, his whole dream. Um, one of us is graduate school. Yeah, well, there's all the students. Um, well, one of us is Alice. She's working for him. Uh, one just graduated from high school. Yeah, so a lot, of, you know, a lot of his analysis was about the So, yeah, I have five kids and three of them are teenagers, and let me tell you, they're being teenagers. <laughs> so, I have a lot of his analysis was about the last year. So, I have a lot of his analysis was about the last year. So, I have a lot of his analysis was about the last year. So, I have a lot of his analysis was about the last year. So, I have a lot of his analysis was about the last year. So, I have a lot of his analysis was about the last year. So, I have a First of all, I was in Well, and I was in the first place. Yeah. 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 No, the previous one. This one, not only wants a video, she wants a video. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. I like her. She's very excited about her. She's a really nice girl. She comes back and she knows everybody. In fact, not everyone's but She still owns the place of the city. She talks to us. Not so much doing it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.